This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. Read by Brian Ness. The Legends of the Jews, Volume One, by Rabbi Louis Ginsburg. The Ten Generations, the Inhabitants of the Seven Earths. When Adam was cast out of paradise, he first reached the lowest of the seven earths, the Eres, which is dark, without a ray of light, and utterly void. Adam was terrified, particularly by the flames of the ever-turning sword, which is on this earth. After he had done penance, God led him to the second earth, the Adama, where there is light reflected from its own sky and from its phantom-like stars and constellations. Here dwell the phantom-like beings that issued from the union of Adam with the spirits. They are always sad. The emotion of joy is not known to them. They leave their own earth and repair to the one inhabited by men, where they are changed into evil spirits. Then they return to their abode for good, repent of their wicked deeds, and till the ground, which, however, bears neither wheat nor any other of the seven species. In this Adama, Cain, Abel, and Seth were born. After the murder of Abel, Cain was sent back to the Eris, where he was frightened into repentance by its darkness and by the flames of the ever-turning sword. Accepting his penance, God permitted him to ascend to the third earth, the Arca, which receives some light from the sun. The Arca was surrendered to the Cainites forever as their perpetual domain. They till the ground and plant trees, but they have neither wheat nor any other of the seven species. Some of the Cainites are giants; some of them are dwarfs. They have two heads, wherefore they can never arrive at a decision. They are always at loggerheads with themselves. It may happen that they are pious now, only to be inclined to do evil the next moment. In the Ge, the fourth earth. Lived the generation of the Tower of Babel and their descendants. God banished them thither because the fourth earth is not far from Gehenna, and therefore close to the flaming fire. The inhabitants of the Ge are skillful in all arts and accomplished in all departments of science and knowledge, and their abode overflows with wealth. When an inhabitant of our earth visits them, they give him the most precious thing in their possession. But then they lead him to the Nishia, the fifth earth, where he becomes oblivious of his origin and his home. The Nishia is inhabited by dwarfs without noses. They breathe through two holes instead. They have no memory. Once a thing has happened, they forget it completely. Whence their earth is called Nishia, forgetting. The fourth and fifth earths are like the Arca. They have trees, but neither wheat nor any other of the seven species. The sixth earth, the Zia, is inhabited by handsome men who are the owners of abundant wealth and live in palatial residences, but they lack water, as the name of their territory, Zia, drought, indicates. Hence, vegetation is sparse with them, and their tree culture meets with indifferent success. They hasten to any water spring that is discovered, and sometimes they succeed in slipping through it up to our earth, where they satisfy their sharp appetite for the food eaten by the inhabitants of our earth. For the rest, they are men of steadfast faith more than any other class of humankind. Adam remained in the Adama until after the birth of Seth. Then, passing the third earth, the Arca, the abiding place of the Cainites. And the next three earths as well, the Ge, the Nishia, and the Zia, God transported him to the Tebel, the seventh earth, the earth inhabited by men. End of chapter three, part one.